his goodness and his mercy. Amen. We honor First Lady. Amen. The members and officers of this ministry, to those of our membership that are absent, God bless you. We hope that you're on with us. Amen. And to those of our social media community that visit with us some Sunday after Sunday, God bless you. We thank you. Thank you for allowing us to come into your homes and to serve you on this morning. If you have your Bibles, if you will join me this morning in Luke, the Gospel according to Luke, and we will read in your hearing the from the 13th chapter, verses 10 through 17. Uh, prosperity. 
And, and so, if you think about this, we hear it all the time. I bind this sickness and I lose health. Because to us, it makes sense that I'm binding the devil and then I'm losing healing over you. But if you think about it, I, and, and if you've been in church for some time and some, some amount of time, you'll, you'll account back and you'll hear prayers that I bind the spirit of divorce. I bind sickness. I bind lack. I bind uh, uh, apology. And I bind uh, uh, adultery. I bind fornication. And we lose this and so on and so forth. But think about this. I just want you to think. What are the things that the church has been plagued by for years? Poverty. Divorce. The divorce rate in the church is higher than that in the world. Some of us, to include myself, are working on the third marriage, fourth marriage. But these things were bound upon us. Why? Due to the lack of our own understanding. See, first and foremost, you need to understand this. First and foremost, binding and loosing always doesn't happen in the same nature. This scripture proves this. Because when a person is dealing with a situation, it represents an understanding that they're already bound. See, inside the temple that we have, the devil has already afflicted the temple with an infirmity. This woman that is in this text for 18 years had a devil binding her. There was already a bound situation. She was bent over and could not, she couldn't stand up straight because she was bound by the devil. Now, see, some of this issue is the same issue that Jesus told the disciples in the 17th chapter of Matthew. He said that you cannot do these things, you can't cast out these devils because of your unbelief. And the unbelief being that you don't believe that the physical problem is caused by a spiritual presence. Now watch this. And I, 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 I'm not going to stay here long, but I need you to hear this. It's interesting to me that Jesus gave them power to do this in the 10th chapter of Matthew. Get this now. In the 10th chapter of Matthew, he gave them power over evil spirits and to cast them out. And, it, and something hit me when I was studying for this. The very first time it is ever seen as encountered as them trying was the 17th chapter. Get this. It was given the power in the 10th chapter, but in the 17th chapter it comes up that they now tried to put this into use. And it did not work. So watch this now. Let me make, let's set the stage for you. The 10th chapter, they were given the power. In the 6th chapter, they were given the keys to bind and loose. But in the 17th chapter, something goes wrong, and it does not work. And Jesus says it's because of their unbelief. They did not believe that the physical issue was caused by spiritual presence. But the devil was released from the boy, and he was healed. The same thing happens in this text right here. And he says that she's already bound, but she needs to be loose. So your binding of bad things retains the bad thing. See, in our understanding, we think that we're trapping something, but essentially, spiritually, you are. But what is happening, Jesus points out that this woman is already bound. And it says that she's bound by a spirit of infirmity. So there was no need for Jesus to say, I bind infirmity, because she was already bound by infirmity. But if I'm going to say, I bind this sickness, all I'm doing is reinforcing the tie that's already there. He says she doesn't need to be bound, she needs to be loose. But see, we don't know what to find and don't know what to lose. And it proves because we have bound things that the church has 
been plagued by for years because of our ignorance of binding and loosing. But if we knew that some things that in the church needed to be loosed from us need to be, in other words, released from the temple, then we would have been letting these things go. And maybe the divorce rate wouldn't have been so high if we weren't so busy binding it. But watch this. This calls for an exact study of the terms of binding and loosing. Because watch this. Jesus is clear. He says, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So let's deal with that first and foremost. All Jesus is saying right here is, whatever you allow yourself to be bound by, heaven will allow it. Whatever you decide to loose yourself from, heaven will agree that you are loose from it. But if you don't decide what you're going to be bound by and what you're going to be free from, heaven does not have a choice and decision in this. It starts with you. Now watch this. In 2 Corinthians, Paul tells us that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but to the bringing down of strongholds. The bringing down of strongholds. Because once a spirit attaches itself to you, and once you don't destroy it, it becomes a stronghold. And it has such a hold on you that it starts making decisions. It starts being the one that manifests something in your life that you don't want there. And for the ignorant preacher that will lay hands on you and say, yes, you're sick, but I bind this sickness and I lose health. Okay, smart guy. You just reinforced a bond on the sickness that already has me bound while losing the presence that needs to be there to combat it. Get this. But again, if we study this throughout the Word of God, it tells us something. The Word of God, grace, instruction, never tells us to bind anything bad to us. I pulled up a couple of scriptures to prove it to you. Proverbs 3 and 3. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck and write them upon the table of thine heart. You have to, you have to retain something that is good, but you let go of something that is bad. It doesn't do you any good to bind something that is bad. The word is not going to tell you to bring in something to your temple that is bad and loose the thing that you need. What sense does that make? I bind poverty. God, why am I broke? You're binding poverty and everything that comes along with poverty. Let it go. But you're loosing prosperity and wondering why you don't have it. You let it go. But you're holding on to what you want, poverty. But once you lose yourself from poverty because you're already bound by it, then you can bind something else to yourself. You can bind wisdom. You can bind work ethic. You can bind saving. You can bind a whole lot of other wholesome things to you because watch this. Binding and loosing is asking for one spiritual presence to be replaced with another. This is what you must understand. So if one spiritual presence has a stronghold on you, you need to get rid of that and replace it with the opposite. And letting it go is not replacing it. Because when you open the temple doors and say, I loose you and let you go, it's not coming back. You kick God out. But you have retained the thing that keeps you where you are. And you wonder to yourself, why is this person at the altar every single Sunday with the same old problem? Because the men and women of God are in ignorance. We're binding and loosening in the wrong way. The word just sat here and told us, 
Jesus made the clear example. You're already bound. You need to be loose. But we do things to make it loose. Woman, thou art loose. And don't even know what it means. Because you turn around and bind them to the very thing that you say you're loosening from. We have to get into a situation to where we understand what to bind and what to lose. We have to understand what we're going to allow to be in the temple and what we're going to open the doors and kick out. But if you kick out God, don't say anything about his absence. If you are the one that's sitting there saying, I bind poverty, don't be complaining about being broke. If you're sitting there, you're binding sickness, don't sit there complaining to God that you're sick because he's already told you. Whatever you bind, heaven will allow it. There's no need for you to pray about something you yourself are binding to you. Let it go. Just like you let go the thing that you need. Watch this. Well, preacher, what are you saying? Okay. How, give, you, give me a good example that is usable. I'm glad you asked. The typical person that has high blood pressure will eat a sausage sandwich for breakfast, a pork chop for, for lunch, and a bowl of chitlins for dinner. And they will not just do that, but they'll pour salt on it at every meal. And say, y'all, I need you to heal me of this high blood pressure. But I'm binding myself to all the things that cause it. But until I start to let some things go in my life that is causing this sickness, it's going to be with me. Because these things manifest in a lifestyle. When you have a devil in you, it manifests in the actions. Just like the Spirit of God manifests in actions. So if you're going to do something to destroy the temple, heaven is saying, go ahead. Do you. I don't mind about you dying early. I'm going to call you in here and ask you why. But we have to watch this. And for the person that's sitting there, yes, hey man, preacher, they shouldn't eat pork. Don't be foolish. The Bible deals with you too. All things are to be accepted with thanksgiving and with understanding. You just can't have an overindulgence and stuff. Everything has to be in its proper balance. And when you start to live in the order of God and understand balance, understand that sometimes I just can't sit here. I need to get out and walk somewhere. Even if just that walking gives me a little bit of exercise, I got to do that. I got to change some things in my lifestyle. I got to let something else have a better hold on me than this laziness, this slothfulness, and then praying to God about the things that I'm letting take hold of me. I need you to understand something. Jesus never said he will lose it. He said whatever you lose, heaven will agree. Whatever you buy, heaven will agree. You just have to determine what you're going to buy and what you're going to lose. And until we come into an understanding of the word and stop leaning to our own reason and dialect, then we will free ourselves from some things. How help me hold it up. How can we say we are free indeed and living under the bondage of demonic presences? We live under the bondage of so many demonic presences that we don't it's, glory to God. I talked about this last week. We need to start making an inventory of the things we do. We need to start saying, wait a minute, why am I doing this? Wait a minute, why am I dealing with this? What is there spiritually in me that I need to kick out and loose from myself because I'm allowing it? And what is it that I need to bind to myself that's going to make me better? Because whatever I allow it, 
to be in the temple will be here. Whatever I evict, got to go. But if I tell that thing that's got to go, it, that is gone, how do you ever expect God to help you? I bind sickness and loose health and healing. I bind sickness, I need you. Healing, I don't need that. I let it go. It's that simple. And you have bound yourself to heal, to sickness. You have reinforced it. And it's just not as simple as saying it in word. It's in understanding those spirits that are in you that's manifesting the action. This is the most important thing. In this account, the devil was recognized in the fact that she was bent over and couldn't straighten up. This was not a physical condition. This was a spiritual infirmity. The boy that had epilepsy and that was falling in the water and falling in the fire due to seizures, this wasn't a physical issue, even though we had put a physical name on it. This was a spiritual presence that they were bound by and need to be freed from. But until, and see, this is our problem. The apostles, the disciples were looking at it wrong. We did not even see their wrong and straighten it up. We're still trying to bind people by binding them to the thing they're already bound by. And wondering why they're not getting healed. Wondering why they're not getting saved. Wondering why our church has still got fornication. Wondering why our divorce rate is still so high because we're binding it. And heaven is allowing it. Because it's our decision to live under this while we're sitting here talking about we're free and need. And you go home and get beat up. Miss me with that. This is not what God has asked us to do. The problem Okay, Holy Ghost, I'll say it. The problem is we have accounted the church to be a hospital. I know you came to this conclusion because Jesus says that it's, the, it's those in, that are sin that need a physician. But that's exactly what he meant. Those that are here are supposed to be learning how to be physicians out there. Not in here. We're here in the educational center. When he called the disciples to him, they were, he was teaching them. He wasn't healing them. He was teaching them. The word says that I will give you pastors according to my own heart, which will feed you with knowledge and understanding. We have stopped teaching because we don't know. <clears throat> and the problem is the people of God don't know. Because we don't know. And then when you start teaching these things, ah, and, and I, I can't receive that. Well, stay in that bondage. Stay being with the big dummy. That's, that's who I call the devil nowadays, by the way. Because y'all may be calling him the, the, the God the big G and him the little G. No. God is the big G and he is the big D. The big dummy. And everybody that follows him is the little dummies. And you've got to understand this. He is blinded you by ignorance because he is stupid. And if you allow yourself to be in that bondage, God is saying, I'm not, I'm not going to interfere in your choice. That's your free will. If that's what you want to be bound by, be bound by it. But if you want to be loosed, there's a whole book of grace or instruction that will tell you how to be loosed. This ain't nothing to be cute about. Watch this. I'm getting out your way. I trust you. Trust me. I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to go. I'm getting ready to move. Prayer. We, we, we got all cute nowadays. Intercessory prayer. This kind of prayer. That kind of prayer. Prayer, first off, is communication with God. Don't fool yourself. But what this allows you to understand is you can weaponize your prayer. When you weaponize your prayer, there's a difference 
in how you pray to God and how you speak to the devil. Once you are speaking to the devil, you are still in prayer, but you have weaponized your prayer, telling the devil he got the move. Anytime you are using communication to a spiritual source, it is prayer. But your prayer turns to a form of weapon against the enemy. This is why you use the name of Jesus in it, because you know at the name of Jesus, demons tremble, and they leave. Not at your authority, but at the authority of the blood of Christ. And once you understand that and start to weaponize your prayer, you understand what Paul said, that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. It is in prayer. It is in the word that says, I see you and I rebuke you and I'm going to do the physical thing necessary to kick you out. I'm going to evict you all the way. I'm not just going to say it. I rebuke you and keep doing the same thing. I've got to physically evict the devil so I stop doing this thing. And this is where binding and loosing takes its place together. Because once you lose something, you've got to bind something to keep you on that straight path. If you've been dumb, now you need to bind wisdom to you so you don't walk in those dumb ways no more. I'm, I'm going to give you another scripture and I'm going to move. Proverbs 6, 20 and 21. The word says, My son, keep thy father's commandment and say not the law of your mother. Bind them continually upon thine heart and tie them about thy neck. People of God, the word calls for us to bind the thing of God to us and loose or get rid of the thing that does not belong. When you start to identify some behaviors, they're not just behaviors. You see, some of us, and some of us have sat, sat and reasoned with ourselves about some things that we do and say, I don't even understand why I do it. I don't know what's gonna, what I need to do to make a difference. I, devil, I bind you, I rebuke you. And then you say, well, well God, why isn't that working? Why am I not getting better? Because he never told you to reinforce the bond that is already upon you. You are already bound by the devil, as was this woman and this, and, and, and this wasn't no short bond. This was a stronghold. The devil had her so, wrapped so tight, she couldn't even stand up straight physically. The word of God, when it comes about strongholds, is talking about the spiritual presence. And this is why we find it so hard to, tie, to tear ourselves from the things we don't understand why we continue to do. Because we don't understand how to evict them. It's not just by word. When you, it, I, I talked in Bible study in my, in my Son of the Face ministry this past Tuesday. We talked about the law of flesh. And, and how, we, how we stigmatize people with this scripture of Paul that says, when I would do good, evil is always present. As if he gave some type of excuse for his wrongdoing. But this is not what Paul was doing by identifying the law of the flesh. What he was saying was, I come into a place of awareness. I come into a place of inventory. I, I now see some things that I'm doing and I'm acknowledging why I'm doing it. I'm being straight out to say it ain't the devil that's doing it, it's me. The devil has, is present with his temptation, but I'm falling for it. So I now need to figure out how to stop falling for the same trick over and over and over again. The law of the flesh is not an excuse, it's a place of awareness. Just like this word of God. Any man or woman that will stand in a pulpit and beat you up with this is 
a sure enough vote. Because this is not meant to beat you up. Because Jesus said, I didn't come to condemn you. I came to save you. I can only save you by making you aware. If we are walking together and there's a big hole that you're about to trip in, I can let you walk in and just say, you, you're crazy for falling in that hole. That's condemning you. Or I can point it out and say, there's a hole coming up. And if you choose to walk in it, then that's on you. But saving you means to make you aware of the danger that you're about to commit to yourself. Or the dangers that you are committing to yourself. This is what the word does. It makes us aware of these things. Why do we need to be aware? Peter told us the best. You need to be aware because if you're not, the devil is as a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. And he can only devour those that are not aware. Peter was the best person to say this because when Jesus was captured and taken before Pilate, they were asleep. So we need to learn how to be aware and let the word of God wake us up to some things. We can only get rid of some things in our life once we become aware of them. The word is not beating you up just because it's called you out. It shed some light on some things and illuminated some things in your mind and gave you something to think about. So the next time, I tell you, the next time somebody lays some hands on you and say they find something and, and what comes behind it is the bad thing and they lose the good thing, you need to get right up and leave that church because I'm telling you, they have reinforced something on you that they, they haven't healed you. They have reinforced something that is already there. And you're going to still have it when you walk out that door. Because until you allow the word of God to show you what you need to be saved from, which is you, not the devil, the devil is going to do his job. It's all for the temptation. But it's you that's got to learn how to stop eating off his train. And then say, what's, what's this? This ain't no good. It looked good on the outside, but this is nasty. Yeah. How do I stop? Come, how do I stop letting them come to me with this nonsense? Grace is telling you, you, because you're saved by grace or by instruction. The instruction of God will help you to get yourself out of all situations. It says that it is the knowledge of it is acceptable for all things pertaining to this life. So by the news, when you think about it, you're not going to bind the bad thing and lose the thing that you are actually looking for. You need to bind the good thing and get rid of the bad thing. Because whatever you bind is what you're retaining inside the temple. And it's that which is what's going to manifest. Start trying to bind the Holy Ghost. Start trying to bind some of the ways of God. And then we can start to live under the liberty of God. Because that's the only way that we can. You can only live under the liberty of something if you know about it. So, I'm done.